Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 5th of December. India's central bank keeps the repo rate unchanged, revises GDP forecast. Pakistan asks UK to return Nawaz Sharif after treatment is over. And U.S. envoy Khalil Zad in Afghanistan to revive peace talks. And now for all the details. The unusual surge in the price of onions has hit people hard, not just consumers, but also retailers and wholesalers across India. Because of the damage to onions due to floods in prime onion manufacturing provinces, this crisis has now forced the government to import the vegetable. The skyrocketing prices of onions post-monsoon crisis across India has made the vegetable out of reach of the common man, leaving them with no choice but to limit the consumption of the staple food. Onion prices in India are at record highs, retailing anywhere between rupees 80 and rupees 180 per kilogram, with instances of heists and thefts of the bulb being reported from many parts of the country. Poor and middle class people are having a tough time managing their kitchen supplies due to surge in onion prices. market Despite the export ban enacted in September to keep domestic supply inside India, prices have surged, especially in Maharashtra, the country's biggest producer. Several budget hotels have also stopped the usage of onions in food preparations. This is the case of the crop 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 और ये भाव का बढ़ोतरी और एक महीना डेढ़ महीना कम से कम रहेगा और जो पहला पोजीशन 40-50 रुपए किलो का था नया प्याज का वो आज 80 रुपए से 110 रुपए किलो तक का है। Meanwhile, amid surging prices, state-run trading firm MMTC has placed another onion import order of 4,000 tons from Turkey. The shipments are expected to reach by January. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on Wednesday said in the parliament that the government has taken a host of measures, including imports, to deal with the rising prices of onion. In a surprise move, India's central bank on Thursday kept the interest rates unchanged but revised gross domestic product growth projection to 5% from 6.1% for the current financial year 2019-20. The Reserve Bank of India, or RBI, released its fifth bi-monthly monetary policy statement for 2019-20 on Thursday. The six-member monetary policy committee, led by RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das, decided to keep the policy repo rate, the rate at which it lends to commercial banks, unchanged at 5.15%. In 2019, the RBI has cut repo rate by 135 basis points so far to a nine-year low of 5.15%. The Reserve Bank of India, or RBI, released its fifth bi-monthly monetary policy statement for 2019-20 on Thursday. Based on its considered assessment, the MPC voted unanimously to keep the policy rate unchanged. It, however, decided to continue with the accommodative stance as long as it is necessary to revive growth while ensuring that inflation remains within the target. 
The RBI also revised down its gross domestic product forecast for the full fiscal year that ends in March 2020 from 6.1 percent predicted in its October policy to 5 percent on Thursday. According to a data released last week, India's economic output expanded by 4.5 percent in the three months that ended in September, marking the slowest pace of growth since 2013. In is from Pakistan. The Pakistan government has written to the British authorities seeking return of ailing former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif after his medical treatment in the UK is over. Sharif, convicted of corruption charges, flew to the UK for medical treatment last month. Pakistan has written to the British government seeking the return of ailing former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif after his medical treatment in the UK is over. A leading Pakistani news channel ARY News on Tuesday disclosed the news. The government letter to the authorities in the UK reportedly said that Sharif is facing scores of charges in several cases in Pakistan and is also convicted in a case. 69-year-old Sharif had left for London in an air ambulance via Doha on November 19 for medical treatment after the Lahore High Court allowed him to travel abroad for four weeks. He has been diagnosed with an immune system disorder. A two-member bench had ordered the federal government to remove the former premier's name from the exit control list without placing any conditions. Sharif was accompanied by his younger brother, Shahbaz Sharif, and personal physician. Meanwhile, in the latest, Pakistan's anti-graft watchdog on Tuesday froze the properties of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz President Shahbaz Sharif and his two sons in different cities, citing corruption charges. Moving on, the Awami Action Committee has called for abolition of the newly proposed Land Reforms Commission by Pakistan in Gilgil, Pakistan. They termed it as another move by Islamabad to grab lands of the common public in the illegally occupied territory. Members of Awami Action Committee have called for abolition of Pakistan government's newly proposed Land Reforms Commission in Gilgit, Baldistan. They blamed Pakistan for illegal land acquisition over the years in Gilgit, Baldistan and termed the move as a new tool to grab lands owned by the common public. While expressing concern that the plan will be soon discussed in the Assembly, the activists warned massive protest if the administration continues with so-called land reforms in the illegally occupied territory. <laughs> ये आवाम के मलकियत के ऊपर शपथों मारने के बराबर है जिसे आवाम एक्शन कमेटी किसी सूरत कबूल करने के लिए तैयार नहीं होगी चाहे उसके लिए हमें धरने लगाने पड़े आवाम को सड़कों पर निकालना पड़े इस्लामाबाद की तरफ मार्च करना पड़े जो कुछ भी करना पड़ेगा हम इस सिलसिले में जो है ना कमिटेड हैं और हम करेंगे Pakistan government had earlier acquired swathes of land in Gilgit, Baldistan for the construction of multi billion China Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC project the project came as a massive setback for the people in the illegally occupied region as no compensation was paid to them against land acquisition carried out by Pakistan. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. Special Envoy Zelmay Khalilzad on Wednesday arrived in Kabul to meet Afghan officials including President Ashraf Ghani as a part of Washington's new efforts to revive peace talks with the Taliban. Khalilzad is also scheduled to meet Taliban negotiators in Qatar. U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad on Wednesday arrived in Kabul to meet Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and other senior officials as part of a new efforts to revive peace talks with the Taliban. Khalilzad was scheduled to fly to Qatar later to meet Taliban negotiators and rejoin talks with the group to discuss steps that could lead to intra-Afghan negotiations. The special envoy's visit to Kabul came days after U.S. President Donald Trump visited American troops in Afghanistan for the Thanksgiving holiday and raised hopes for a revival of peace agreement with the Taliban, which he halted in September. Trump, during the surprise visit to Afghanistan, told Ghani that he has revived the peace talks with the militant group and that he believes the group wants a ceasefire now. 
Several weeks of informal Qatar peace talks were abruptly broke off after a suicide bombing claimed by the Taliban killed a U.S. soldier and 11 others. Residents in Afghanistan's Nangarhar prayed and lit candles late on Wednesday to mourn the deaths of renowned Japanese doctor Tetsu Nakamura and five others who were killed in a shooting ambush. Nakamura had been granted honorary Afghan citizenship recently for decades of humanitarian work in the east of the country. A shooting ambush on Wednesday in Afghanistan's eastern Nangarhar province, which killed a Japanese doctor, triggered an outpouring of grief among the people whose lives he helped change for the better. Tetsu Nakamura, head of Peace Japan Medical Services and five others, were shot dead on Wednesday after their NGO vehicle was attacked by unknown gunmen. Residents in Nangarhar's Jalalabad gathered late in the evening and prayed and lit candles for the attack victims. Nakamura had been involved in rebuilding Afghan irrigation and agriculture and had been granted honorary Afghan citizenship recently for decades of humanitarian work in the east of the country. The ambush came a week after a grenade attack on a United Nations vehicle in Kabul heightened fears for those doing humanitarian work amid one of the world's longest-running conflicts. No group has yet claimed responsibility for the attack. Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunevardhane has denied allegations that a Swiss embassy worker had been abducted and threatened to disclose sensitive embassy-related information in Colombo last month. He said it was another step of misinformation against the political leadership of the island nation. Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunevardhane on Wednesday denied a Swiss embassy worker had been abducted in the country, saying it was another step of misinformation. The Swiss embassy said in a statement that the worker who has had her travel abroad restricted until December 9 alleged she was abducted and threatened to disclose sensitive embassy-related information on November 25. Speaking at a news conference in Colombo, the Sri Lankan foreign minister said that there was little truth in the allegation. Most of the uh, matters mentioned by the embassy and the officials have been uh, properly uh, checked by the police and we feel and we have explained to the ambassador that they have uh, very little truth in the main allegation. Gunevardhane said that an investigation into the incident cannot proceed without a statement from the victim, which had not been provided. Swiss authorities have said that the victim is in poor health and is unable to do so. Hindu worshippers slaughtered hundreds of animals and birds as part of a religious ritual in southern Nepal this week. The ceremony, which is held every five years in the Himalayan nation, has been facing objections since long now by many animal rights activists who believe the event is a cruel and gruesome spectacle. Scores of devout Hindus thronged the temple in southern Nepal, where hundreds of animals and birds were sacrificed this week as part of a ritual. The ceremony held every five years at the Gadhimai temple in Bara district is believed to be the largest such mass slaughter event in the world. Devotees who spend days sleeping out in the open and offer prayers ahead of the event believe the sacrifice meant to appease Gadimai, an incarnation of the Hindu goddess of Pa, Kali, brings them luck and prosperity. The ritual was performed this year amid an outcry from animal rights activists in the country who said it is a cruel and gruesome spectacle. In 2016, Nepal's Supreme Court also said the practice should be prohibited and called on the government to frame a law that would gradually bring an end to the sacrifices, but the ban has always been ignored. About 80% of Nepal's 30 million population are Hindus and many sacrifice animals to appease deities during festivals. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.